Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Alcoholism, I know you can go into all sorts of, I can go into all sorts of behavior. When I was drunk, and then when I was sober, made no difference. When step one, when they're in there, when we talk, when we get to be step one, you know, it talks about my life's unmanageable. But you see, my life, I didn't realize when I was out in the world I was in, and I was working. My gosh, I made good money. I had uh, opportunities. I had very, very kind people with me and uh, for me and everything else. But you see, I didn't know that, and I couldn't feel that or see that or with my mind. I couldn't do that. See. Because I was always going on a selfish side. I was always going on my way of living, thinking, wanting, doing, and having, and being. And this, in turn, I built a character like this now. And I built this character. And the reason why I use these words, character, is because they're in print. And there's something I must know about. Because, you see, it's much more to my problem than just drinking. There's much more. I've got, a, I've got something wrong with me. And it's, it was never identified, in, for me, it was never identified... In the first two and a half years in Alcoholics Anonymous, I came here in Alcoholics Anonymous. I started going to meetings. And as I started to go to these meetings, I went for two and a half years steady all the time. I have lived at meetings. But I was the same man sober as I was drunk when I was at the meeting or when I left the meeting or when I got home or got to work or anyplace else. I'm the same man because everything affects me yet. Things bother me. I, I get depressed. I get worried. I get concerned so deep that I can't function on the day I'm in. I'm sick of the stomach because maybe I can't pay my bills or I'm going to lose something. I don't know what this is. It's a mind-controlling disease. It started a long time ago, and it's called alcoholism. And this means exactly that. It's a condition of the mind that I can do nothing about. When the, In the big book, when it talks on page 45, when it says lack of power was my dilemma, but how was I to find this power? That's what this book is about, to enable me to find a power which will solve, solve my problems. It says power, see? And them are good words, see? Because when I got here, the life I ran, ran in when I was drinking was a tough life. It was a dirty life. It was a hurtful life, a harmful life. It was, a, it was traveling. It was pushing and shoving, fighting, getting in accidents, making things happen. Don't give a damn who you hurt and how you do it. Do it. And so this was a character-building thing, though. See, this is something that when... I didn't realize when you get here in Alcoholics Anonymous, you can't whitewash that. You can't just expose it and say, I did that. And then you'll be all right, because you won't be all right. Because the character is still the same character. I'm the same character today as I was when I got here if I don't change. Now, that's where the program recovery comes in now. But first, though, I believe, what I sincerely, honestly believe, that as you as an alcoholic, me as an alcoholic, if we don't talk about, if we don't describe, become aware of the disease of alcoholism, of what it is, how it is, where it functions, what's the symptoms, why is it there, why does it have to be there? And so if that's not talked about and described, I found out I couldn't do the steps. I couldn't do, the, I, I couldn't do a step application for my life. I couldn't do it. I could do it here and there. I could do it now and then with a certain somebody, but that's all. The true person I was in the day I was in, kept shining through. All of a sudden, everything's going beautiful. Man, I've got, a, I've got a wife that I took through the drinking years, and we're having a ball. We have bought a new house, watched them build it. Bought a brand new car right off the showroom, back in 1954, I'm talking about. And you see, you know what happens to me, though? I have still the same character that I've always been. I'm still angry. I'm still looking at people jealously, envious. I'm still correcting people. I'm still looking at my wife. She can't do things right. What's the matter with her? She's bothered me. People are bothering me. The disease of alcoholism is a mind function disease. It's a power. It's a power that I use for my life because it is me. And the power that I'm talking about all the time is a power that's been built in me, and it, I can't do a thing about it. I just can't. Lack of power is my dilemma. See, I can't just erase things. I can't forget things. I can't do things in the day I'm in in reference to what I should do. I can't do that. The things that I do in the day I'm in are the things I want to do. They're the things I think is best for me. 
It's the things that I know darn well. There's a lot of times I shouldn't do something, I'll do it anyway. The disease of alcoholism is a power. And as it's a power, it means exactly that. Right today, this day today, now, if I call upon me in reference to my life of what I want, you know what happens to me? I'm back in the disease of alcoholism. The reason why, I'm going back to the same mind, I'm going back to the same defects, the same trouble I had before in the past years. I got it again. I'm doing it again, absolutely doing it again. And yet, I'll, I'll excuse my behavior, I'll rationalize out what I'm doing some way or another, I'll put the blame somewhere else. I'll accuse you or that or them or the weather or something that made me do what I was doing. And I don't even know that that's alcoholism. I don't know that that's the purpose that I couldn't live in the world I was in back when I was drinking. It was too tough. There was too many things wrong. Too many people. Were, I couldn't. They won't change. I don't want them to change and they won't do it. And I get frustrated. I get angry. I get hateful. I have an inside in me that was really strong. I mean strong. I was a young guy. I was 31 years old when I got here. And I was 31 years old, and I was a tough guy. And I was strong, and I really was. I was a bigger guy, and, and, and just like anybody when they're young. But you see, all of these things made my disease worse when I was sober than when I was drunk. Because when I was drunk, I had an excuse. I could tell you, I'm sorry. I was drunk. I didn't know any better. And I sincerely mean that, too. I tell my boss that, my wife that. Even the bartender that, so he wouldn't throw me out. But you see, that didn't help me in my life because all that did was postpone another event. Just postponed another, another happening so that I, when it happened again, I'd have to figure out how to do that again. And I'm in the unmanageable life and I don't know it. The unmanageable life is always about alcoholism, being untreated, untreated. Now, if you're like me, as far as the alcoholism is concerned, you're going to have to learn, like I had to learn, just exactly what is this here, alcoholism? Why keep coming to meetings like this meeting here, this workshop? Or why keep going to the meetings you do go to, and you, and you go day after day, week after week, year after year, and yet you still live in the same world where you can, where you can hurt people, where you see people that bother you. You want, you want them to stop that. Where you carry a mind, at least I'm talking about me, and I'm not talking about you. I carry a mind around with me. It's a hostile mind, an angry mind. It's a mind really is fault finding. I find fault. I look at something and right away, immediately, I see something wrong. I can't see something right. I see something wrong, though. And I don't know that, that what this is, see? And I'm not talking about being drunk. I'm talking about being an AA sober for years. I'm talking about a way of life, a method of living that's never ending. It's a never ending life. I pick on people. I get dom domineering. I, I get so demanding. I want to have so much my way. I want you to know that you're wrong, and I want to correct you. I want to tell you, whoever you are, it doesn't make no difference to me, because the character that I am, I can do no more. I can do no more than that. I mean well, but I can't do well. And this is serious, what I'm talking about, because you see, I know for sure that Alcoholics Anonymous is a program of recovery. It's a program, it's not a program of failure. It's not a program of trial and error would fit you or you or you, whoever you are, and not the other person, or it's not something that you just comes and goes. It's a character change, a complete character change, living differently only because of what it is, what is different. See, the mind, I never realized that the mind is already fixed. It's in me. It's who I represent. I can do no more than what I do. Whatever I do, by my power, is always going to be a repeat performance. Now, I don't know if you, you hear that correctly or not. I had to hear it because of the fact that after I'm sober for a while, after I'm going along and I think I'm doing so well, I'm making money, I'm, I'm, I'm buying good stuff, I'm going to treat my wife pretty good. Every now and then I don't, but pretty good compared to what I used to. I go to work on time, and I stay at work. All day long. I don't go to the bars and get a couple of shots every now and then so I can steady my nerves down. I live in a different world in Alcoholics Anonymous. But the other world, there's only, you see, in my, in my book, anyway, the way I look at it, there's only one world. I know that. But there's two concepts. There's my concept and there's God's concept. And I know this is real true. Because one time I lived only in my concept. 
That came from a drunken world into a sober world, and it still stayed in the same world. I was still pushing and shoving. I was still trying to arrange everything, make everything right, make somebody like me, love me, take care of me, and all kinds of things at their expense. Never once was I ever giver. Never once did I ever think of the other person first and then me. I was always self-centered. And then page 60 in your big book, when it talks in there, and it says that I had to be convinced that any life run on self-will could hardly be a success because I'm always in collision or conflict with somebody or something, even when my motives are good. That's the description of the disease of alcoholism. That's the unmanageable life that they're starting to describe. Starts on page 60, and it goes to the top of 63. And it, it, for years and years now, I, I know this for me, in application, it's only an awareness thing now, that I found this out that's in the book, and I started reading this and realizing what it says. Because how I behave in the day I'm in, how some days I'm kind, considerate, I'm patient, tolerant. In other days, I'm mean, egotistical. I'm selfish, self-centered. I want, I want it my way now. Yesterday, I was just the opposite. Yesterday, I'll love you, I'll help you. Next day, I turn on you like a rattlesnake. And I don't even know what that is. I look at you and I keep looking at you. The first thing you know, you know what I do? I pick you apart. And this, this is today I'm talking about. I'm gonna, listen, when I'm speaking of the disease, of alcoholism, believe me this, I'm talking right about today, now. I'm either talking about the disease when it's not treated, or I'm talking about the disease as it is treated, but only in the now. Because what good would it be for any one of us, all of us, any of us, to be here today, leave this room, and go out in the same world that you were in before you got here? Now, I'll tell you, that's going to happen. Because this meeting here, this workshop, is not going to change you. That isn't what happens. This here, you can attend meetings, thousands of them, and I know because I've done this. And as I attended these meetings, I was going in back into the same world I just left before the meeting. I was doing the same behavior, the same thinking. I was repeating a performance that I had already done many times. And don't know, that's alcoholism. Have no idea. That's why I can't have a relationship with another human being. When I'm sober, I'm not talking about drunk. When I'm sober, man, that's a hard nut to swallow. That's a real hard nut to swallow, especially when you're working, especially when you're spending some of your money to help people, any people. doesn't make no difference. But then the next minute, you know what I'm doing? I'm not helping people. I'm getting it my way. I want to have this, and I don't care who I push and shove or hurt. I'm going to take it anyway. I have no idea what the disease of alcoholism is as a power. It's got to be considered. I believe this, that I could never say myself personally, could never say too much in the day I'm in about the disease, about the steps, talking to you, talking to anybody, listening, anything. Because you see, I need the same thing today that any alcoholic with alcoholism needs today. Because it only, this disease of alcoholism, I used to think it was a wasm. I used to think it was in the drunken world. Then you get in the sober world. And then after you're in the sober world, after a period of time, because i got a long way to go, then I'm going to be all right. There ain't no such thing as that. It's absolutely impossible. This is my opinion, only because of what I know. Because this is all in print, what I'm talking about. And this means exactly this. There has to be something for me when I got here, shown to me, help me, tell me, show me. Don't let me try to do this by myself. Don't tell me to read it. Don't tell me to go pray. Don't tell me to turn it over. I don't know what that means because I can't do that. I don't have the power to do that. I never did. I never will. By myself, I'll have to do everything the same way as I've done before. I still have to get impatient. I still have to look at you funny. I still listen to the disease of alcoholism. Any one of us, as we're in this room right now, I'll bet you two to one that each and every one of us had some kind of an opinion about somebody here. Maybe their dress, maybe their beard, maybe their earrings. Maybe they got the earring in the wrong place. Something like that. See? Maybe, see? And I don't even know that that's a mind-controlling power, a mind-controlling power that I use for my life. This is what makes the world I'm in a world that I don't like. I can't be in it because I hurt people. And when I hurt you, I hurt myself. And I don't know that, though. See, my mind gets disturbed. My mind gets full of me. It gets full of my days. It gets full of all of the things that as I see it, 
My mind says it's wrong. Man, it's wrong. It isn't what I'm looking at that's wrong. It's my mind, what it tells me, it's wrong. That's what hurts me. My mind hurts me because it tells me you're funny. You look funny. You dress funny. You act funny. You talk funny. You're too fat. You're too skinny. You're black. I don't like blacks. You're, you're something. My mind talks to me that way. It tells me this, and I listen to it. When I listen to it, it's the power of my life. The power of my life is me. You see, that has to be established. That's the thing I used to drink over. That's the thing that drove me. That's the thing that made me ride the way I used to ride and fight and do things I used to do all the time. I was wound up tight with me all the time. Never once ever thinking, there's, us, there's people, there's people in this world. Never once looking to see these people. They were, they were things that I could get something from. They were things that I had fun with. Throw them away. You have a gal, a beautiful girl. After you get what you want and you, it doesn't set it, throw her away, get another one. That's the story of alcoholism. That's the story of my life when I didn't know what alcoholism is. It's a disease of the mind. And it's called ism because it's alive. It never dies. It'll die when I die. Because it's ism. It's a power. It's a method of living. It's a mind-controlling power. It's got to be burnt. I'm, I'm trying to tell you something in different ways. I'm trying to carry a message that's needed, I believe, is needed for any alcoholic with alcoholism, in anybody, at all, any woman, man, for any, anyone that has the disease. That's what these here, this program recovery is put here on earth. Dr. Bob and Bill Wilson, when they got together, I know God made sure that everything was supplied to them so that it could happen because we wouldn't stand a chance by ourselves. I don't learn by experience. I don't learn by pain. I don't learn by years. I'll do the same damn thing over and over again, expecting different results, and I get hurt every time, and I hurt other people every time. How much, you see, now for myself, the, the disease of alcoholism, if you want, on your paper, now your, your pads and that, if you could, and your thought comes to you about anything that's happening today or anything I'm talking about today, write it down. Even if we can't answer it, we'll answer it later sometime or other. But the important thing about this is, is that as your mind is in the moment you're in, the question is there, and then it's gone. Because alcoholics, I'll tell you this, alcoholics have power. They all have power. Every one of you guys, if you're alcoholics with alcoholism, has power. You have the power right now to sit there and look at me and be somewhere else in this world. <laughs> You can be reliving yesterday's life or last night's life. You can be doing exactly the same thing you've always done. When it gets too tough or you get bored or it gets bothersome, take off. You know, start thinking about something else. How many times? Believe me, I know this. You know, I knew this back when I was drinking. I didn't recognize it, though, but I knew it. Because I would always be, you could be talking to me. I could be looking, at, I could be within inches of you. And you could be talking to me. And you know where my mind is? And eat with you. I don't even hear you. See? <laughs> That's the disease of alcoholism where the selfish self says, man, this guy is full of it. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> this is true. This is real true. But you see, the, the worst part about this is it never goes away. It, you, can't, you can't erase it. You can't, you can't say, I'll never do that again. You can't say that. Because the second you go to self, after many years, and I'm talking about my years, after many years, I still have that same capacity. I have the same mind that can do the same thing. But you see, there is a method here. And the reason I'm talking like I am is because of the fact that the 12 steps are an application. But to do the application without the reference to alcoholism, I think you're going to have trouble. I had great trouble. Now, I don't know how many of you would have trouble or not. I don't know. But I did. Because I kept getting lost. I kept getting lost in the day I was in because the day would be pretty nice. All of a sudden, I got a beautiful gal. All of a sudden, I got a job. I got a brand new car. I got a brand new Lincoln. Just bought it brand new right out of the showroom. Bought a brand new Mercury right out of the showroom. See, these things think, tell me, and me tells me that I'm doing real good. Tells me that I'm doing everything perfect. Everything is right. I'm going in the day I'm in. Man, I'm all pumped up. I'm all charged up. Because I've got a good living. I've got a lot of possessions. I've got things that I think make me happy. I think that if I keep this up, man, I'll just go right to the top of the world, wherever that's at. 
But see, I don't know what's going to happen. See, even that brand new car, brand new car, cost me at them days. Remember, you imagine this: I bought a brand new uh, a '57 Lincoln, Premier Coupe, loaded completely for seventy-two hundred dollars. Imagine that seventy-two hundred bucks. <clears throat> and after I after I had it a little bit, you know what? I had to pay for the damn thing. <laughs> now it wasn't so hot, you know. Now it started to be here's something wrong with it. I'm a mechanic, man. I work on these irons, you know. But I've got a temper. I've got something wrong with me. It influences me. It tells me how to behave. It tells me how to look at you. How to get so angry at you I could kill you. How I it, back them days even I couldn't drive my car. There's no damn way. I, you know, my, I would drive my car in your car, too, all the time. Even today. You know, it's, I, keep, yeah, I keep telling you that. The reason why is because it's still there. And I recognize it. I do recognize it. I have no angel. I wish I was. I wish I could walk in water. I wish I could scratch these things off and never look at them again. But the, you've got to look at this, what I'm talking about, as a mind-controlling disease. When you give it the power, it is a disease. And it's called alcoholism. It's never a wisdom. You can never excuse your behavior today, this day, any day, because of some reason. You cannot. There's not a legitimate reason for me to mistreat you, abuse you, to think badly of you. There is not. There can't be. Because this program of recovery, now you might not agree with that, but I'll tell you this is true, that this program of recovery is exactly what it's for. It's a recovery program. It's a recovery away from the disease of alcoholism. There's 12 steps. These 12 steps now, they're in an order form. They're logically in an order form from 1 to 2 all the way up to 12, and you cannot bypass them, mix them. You can't pick and choose them. You can't say that you don't need to do this. You've already done that. It's not that at all. This is something we'll get into real good because this is about the reason to have a workshop, the reason to spend a day where your whole life might turn around. It might. It might turn around and you'll, you'll walk into a world you never knew existed. You never knew because you never lived there. And the reason you never lived there, if you're an alcoholic with alcoholism, it's only there by the grace of God. That's all. No other grace. And to learn this, though, there must be a method. Because the character that I am, that I brought here, has to change. I must change. Or I'll have to do exactly the same thing I've always done. And this is true for every one of us. doesn't make no difference who you are. There's no graduation here. There's no other books to read. There's no other place to go. Alcoholics Anonymous is the only place that I know for an alky like me. Now, there might be other places. I'm not putting no other places down. I'm not speaking against anything. But I am saying, though, that the message here is for me because I'm an alcoholic with alcoholism. It's given me some years. It's given me a lot of years that I know darn well. Money couldn't buy it. I can't find it somewhere else. I looked, I, I struggled, I went through a lot of things. But it's always in Alcoholics Anonymous. It's always in being the character today that God says I can be according to his will and the method, meaning the 12 steps. This is what we'll get into. Uh, I don't know how much more of this alcoholism that I should be talking about, but I certainly want to tell you, and I want, I want you to know at least what I know in the day I'm in for me, that maybe your behavior, maybe your thinking is along the line of mine. Maybe you get kind of mixed up in the day you're in, thinking you're somebody special because you've done so good and your yesterdays were so full of kindness and good deeds that you could do as you damn please today. No way. Not for an alcoholic with alcohol. There is no such thing as that. But you see, the disease will tell me them things. The disease is a mind-controlling disease that will tell me and excuse me and rationalize me in such a way that I can just do anything I want to do and think that I can get away with it. And this here, in this to me, the unmanageable life that I'm talking about. You see, today, this day, why should I live in this world today and have an unmanageable world, an unmanageable life? Why should I live in conflict? Why should I live in yesterday's thinking about your behavior or my condition? Why should I look at you today and think about how badly you acted yesterday and I'm going to treat you today because of that? This is serious. This is something, man, this is something that the character that I am, by myself, I can do no more than that. By myself, I, I, play, I wear faces. I wear faces all the time. Do you ever wear faces for people? Do you like somebody? 
and the next person you don't like, but you show somebody a smile and you hate their guts, that you're burning up inside, that you'd like to straighten them out, you'd like to correct them and tell them how wrong they are. This is, this is a thought process that I can't live with. This is the thing that robs me of happiness. This ro robs me of jobs, relationship, having things in a day I'm in that God wants me to have. I can't have them. Because you see, God can never do anything for me. I won't let him. Because I'm the power. I'm the one that says it's this way. I'm the one that can't forgive you. I'm the one that goes around the day I'm in loaded with my yesterdays. My yesterdays are the character that I brought here. Whether it was a drunken character, a sober character, years of being sober. I'm still a character. This, uh, this word character is a word I hated at first, you know, because I used to describe me, you know, back in the drinking days as a character you couldn't trust, a drunken character, a character that will turn on you, you know, and all kinds of things. See, they were always describing me as a character that wasn't any good. And then when I get here and I find out in the big book, in the, in the, in the 12 by 12, uh, the character is, is, is talked about in there. But that's a description of who I represent. And it was true. I was somebody you couldn't trust. I was somebody who will steal your money, take advantage of you. See, the character I was is a character that I built. I built it because it's self. It's self. It's not in, it's not in my head. Not up here. This head here. It's not, it's not up there. It's in my heart, my soul, in my mind. The consciousness of me and the subconscious of me is inside, inside. Up here, it's only opinion. That's up here. It could go either way. Up here. Down here, it only goes one way. That's why I can't do things in the day I'm in that I say, I wish I could do or I'm going to do what I want to do. I wind up, I can't do it because something stops me. It gets to be too tough. It becomes too much work. It becomes something. And then I excuse my behavior and I don't do it. And I think I can get away with that. I think that's okay. So I go into another day. And I go into this day with the same thought process that I had in the day before. It's a repeat performance all the time. We got... Uh, We can have uh, we'll, we'll go for another hour. We can have a co we can have a coffee break for about ten minutes or so around ten o'clock. So don't get anxious. I mean, you can get up and move if you want any time. Go to the head or something. So so I uh, I don't want to start the steps yet uh, because of the questions that I want. Try to try to get used to that pencil and paper there, uh, pen and paper that. Uh, for questions. The reason why is because even afterwards, sometimes I used to think myself, uh, I wish I'd have asked somebody something. I wish I remembered this. Or how did, he, how, did, how did that go? Or how was that said? Uh, how, what, did, what does that really mean? And that, you see, in Alcoholics Anonymous, there's so much happening here, and there's so much going on all the time. I had to learn a great deal now about what I'm talking about as far as the vocabulary. In Alcoholics Anonymous, we do have a vocabulary different, different than any anything before, anything. Now, I used to take, in the first place, I had to take the, the, the pronoun, the, pro, the plural pronoun, the we, ourselves, us, they, them, and that. And I had, to, I had to take that out, and I had to put the personal pronoun, me, I, singular, in everything I do in AA. When I read, when I look at anything, I had to put it in as, a, as me, as singular, because... As I as I get as I was going in AA, I all of a sudden became the authority on my time in AA and my works in AA, meaning twelve step and setting things up and all that. And so I started looking at you as somebody that you're going to have to do this now. I already did this, and this meant step step application even. See, so I started reading things like I would read. I admitted I'm powerless over alcohol, that my life's unmanageable. See, all of a sudden now. I have to get centered in me. And that's, that's part of the voc vocabulary I'm talking about. The next thing I had to learn is that we speak a different language here in Alcoholics Anonymous, in the program recovery. We speak in words, and I know the words, but I don't know them in living. I don't know them in application. And these words are words like alcoholism. I, never, I know the word, but I don't know. When I say I'm an alcoholic with alcoholism, is that... I don't know what that is. I really don't know. I know, what I know what an alcoholic is because I'm one. I know the behavior. I know the life. I lived it. But I don't know the, the word alcoholism as a functioning symptom thing that's in me because it's not booze. It's not liquid. It's a power of the mind. 
It's a controlling power that's in me. And so I must learn this. I must learn about surrender. I must learn about application. These are words that I must learn about. Now, I know what surrender means. I know what application means. I know a lot of things, but I don't know what it means to have my mind adjusted or thinking to this what I'm talking about. is because I'll go along in the day I'm in. And you know, application is a word that keeps springing up every so often. Because it's about my behavior. It's about, it's about everything that I'm doing in the day I'm in. That this year, this life that I'm talking about now, today, this life, today, these words like I'm talking about now, saying like application, that's in print. I learned it in print. And this isn't working steps. Working steps to me, I don't know what that means. See, because I could work them with my mind. I could work them with my thoughts. I could work them by listening to you. I could go to meetings and say, I worked the steps. And then I turn right around and I get just as hostile, angry, critical. I get everything... What's working mean? Work to me doesn't mean nothing, but the application means something. Because application, I know, is applying something, using it. Putting it on you, or swallowing it, or whatever it is, application. And it's, this comes out of the 12 by 12. And so this, these words now became a part of my life. I talk about them all the time. I talk about surrender. I talk about uh, alcoholism, willingness, willingness. I don't know what willingness is, because willingness to me means willingness to come to A. I'm willing to, so that's it, that's it, it's a done deal. No, it ain't a done deal. I don't even know the beginning of that word, not a beginning of it, because willingness is, is like right now, being willing to have an open mind, to have an open mind, to allow your mind to be receptive, be receptive to whatever is here to be receptive to, not closed, not opinionated, not preconceived ideas, but an open mind. The willingness, though, is what the major... One is, and then the open mind is a requirement. So willingness is a word that as I know this word, it becomes part of my vocabulary. It helps me think in a day I'm in to live with willingness because it's not something that I read a long time ago. It's not something I maybe said the word. Maybe I heard it at a meeting or something like that. It's in my life. Willingness is willingness to live in a world under God's care. Willingness is driving your car sanely looking at somebody with an honest-to-God love in your heart for him. Willingness is in every aspect of your life. To be willing to have what God wants to present to you. These words have to me, have to be talked about before the steps. Because in the steps, these words are going to come. And when they come, they're not just a reading thing. They're not something to get past. They're not something you do once, and that's done. It's a done deal. No, it's not a done deal. It's a way of life. It's a character building. It's important now because this is going to be the character that I am in all of my affairs. What's all of my affairs? Anywhere my mind goes is where my affairs are because I use that mind as a power. But by itself, it's the wrong power. It's the power of the disease by myself. But we're going to get into steps, and that's going to be explained and talked about. But the important part about this is to know that this is more than just a meeting, just a talk. This isn't something that you're just going to listen to and then walk out that door and think in any terms at all that you've got a hold of something now you never had before and you're going to be all right. No, you ain't going to be all right. It don't work that way. The only way it'll work, the only possible way, is in an application form of 12 steps. That means a living process. That means a character change. That means now. That means right now. We're not doing this so tomorrow's going to be a nice day. It don't work that way. It just don't. I get meaner, madder, tougher. The next day I did this day. Then what do you do? See, this is serious what I'm talking about because if the shoe fits, I don't wear it. In other words, if that's your behavior, if that's the way you look at life, if that's what you do, you personally, you, I'm not telling you, you, that each one of us, it's an individual program, not collectively, no more, singular, I, me. If the shoe fits, I have to wear it. There's no way that I can excuse my behavior now. When I start to hear the message in Alcoholics Anonymous, there's no reason that I can tell you I really got mad or got in a fight or picked on somebody, hurt somebody, whatever it was. There's no legitimate reason that I can tell you that. No, not with honesty. Self-honesty, I can't do that. Because this is always the same story. The world that I live in is a world I can't live in. It has nothing to do with alcohol. Hasn't got a thing to do with it. It's a requirement. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying nothing like that. 
But I am saying, though, that it's much more than just not drinking. It's much more than just coming to Alcoholics Anonymous and think in terms that you can stack up, put in the bank, hold a lot of stuff in you that you learned in the yesterdays and use it today. It does not work that way. It cannot work that way. The reason why is because of the power of the mind. The power of each individual's mind. When it says something, it says it. And when it wants it a certain way, it gets it a certain way or it loses. Everything I'm talking about now is an experience that I've had in my life plus many hundreds of others that I've worked with. It's the same story all the time. I want to be somebody in the day I'm in that only can be that way by a change of character. And this is what Alcoholics Anonymous is all about. And you know, this isn't a time factor. I told you before is that I used to base everything on time. I used to base it on that I'm going to be, when I, when I get there, when I do this step or, or five years from now, whatever it is, things are going to be fine. Everything will be okay. No, they're not going to be okay. The disease of alcoholism is called ism because it's alive, but it's alive now. It isn't going to attack me tomorrow. It attacks me today. My disease needs treating today. It doesn't need it tomorrow. It doesn't need it from yesterday. These yesterdays of my life don't count. They don't help me one bit today. Not a bit. Because the disease will take over. The disease will forget. The disease of alcoholism gets hidden. And it gets hidden like I told you before. It gets hidden in girls, cars, money, property, prestige. It covers it up. Next thing you know, here comes ego. Here comes self again. Here comes all of my memories. And I'm back in the same place I've always been. I am my own source of supply. I'm telling me and I'm doing me exactly the same way I've always done me. And I don't know that this cannot be. I cannot live like that. Time factors are not there. Not, for, not to treat alcoholism. It's a disease of the mind as I live my life today. Now, that's when it's there. If I could get prepared today for a happening tomorrow, wouldn't that be something? Each one of us could have that. But it's impossible. It's just life does not, it just doesn't go that way. There's too many variables. There's too many things that change. There's too many of everything out there. You see, the things I look at when I'm in the world I'm in, the things that I look at, meaning life, meaning people, meaning places, things, them things will always be there. The world out there, I never could look at that world out there because I thought the world was wrong. I thought the world was harming me, hurting me. It's the other way around. I'm hurting the world all the time because of my demands, my selfishness, my demands on people, places, and things to be different than it is. And I'm the one all the time that gets hurt. I came here for me, and I didn't know that. I thought I'd come here just like with everybody else. Let's stay sober. Let's go to meetings. Let's help each other. How could I help anybody? With my mind, you wouldn't want to listen to my mind, not when it's by itself. There's no way. It's too vicious. It, it has too, it's, it's too, it, it's too strong. It doesn't have anything in it other than the power of self. So this life that I'm talking about in Alcoholics Anonymous is a guaranteed life. It's not a hit and miss deal. It's not a trial and error. The 12 steps are there for what they're there for. To change the character of them so that I can be somebody where my alcoholism is being treated. This is true. My sponsor I had, he had nine years when I yelled for help. He used to talk to me in the beginning. I had no idea what he was saying. I had no clue that what he was talking about was something that I had to have. I thought it was still just staying sober. I thought it was still, I'm going to be like that in nine years. I thought that during the time of nine years, you just take life in life's terms and that's that. No, it isn't. It never can be on life's terms. It's got to be on God's terms or it'll never work. Life is too hard, too severe, too demanding. When I'm in the disease of alcoholism, I find fault. I look at people. I look at jobs. I look at money. I look at success. I'm anticipating trouble. I'm a doomsday man. I'm a man. I'm a doomsday man. You know, I, I bought a GI house over there in Hart Street in Canoga Park, right on the other side of Winnetka. I bought that house in March of 1954. And you know, in, in about around, even in 1960, I remember that I was driving down that street looking at my house thinking I was going to lose it thinking that the bank's going to take it from me, home savings alone is going to take it from me, thinking that I won't be able to make the payment. You know, the payment was only $69 a month. And that included taxes and license, uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, insurance, you know, $69 a month. And I was worried, gonna, I'm going to lose that thing, you know. See, my mind is a power. 
It talks to me. It tells me so many things, and I believe it. I listen to it. It guides me, directs me. It tells me I should like you and not you. That's what my mind says. My mind says I like you, I don't like him. I don't know either one of you. And I got an opinion for both of you. Where did I get that from? See? I never question that. I never think that's wrong. I never think there's anything to it. I just go ahead and do it. Why can't I have a mind that doesn't have to do things like that? Why do I have to keep looking, finding fault? Looking and seeing something. I don't need to see it. It's none of my business. You know, see, the disease of alcoholism is a mind-controlling disease. I'm going to keep saying this all the time. The reason why is because I never heard this message. It's in print. I never heard it. I thought, I'll treat you because you deserve to be treated that way. You treat me wrong, I'll treat you wrong. You don't do something for me, I ain't going to do nothing for you. How many? How much of this is important to you? I don't know. I used to have to ask myself. So you see, a long time ago, I was running better than two and a half years. And as I ran these two and a half years, I couldn't hear this message. It wasn't being delivered. What was being delivered was the same thing. Turn it over. Stay sober. Go to more meetings. Get another sponsor. Uh, all kinds of things. See, that's good advice, but not for an alcoholic like me who has alcoholism so severe in his brain that he cannot even make a beginning to find what I need to find here in Alcoholics Anonymous, a way of life, a way to live, a way to think, so that I can benefit, at least have some benefit, of being in Alcoholics Anonymous. Because I kept throwing everything away. I threw people away. I threw opportunities away. I threw away everything over my selfish self. You could be as close to me as you could get. And then I'll all of a sudden turn on you. Why? I had no idea. Nobody would ever talk about them things. They would just say, don't do that. Turn it over to God. Talk to God about it. Stuff like that. Man, I was doing the best I could do. And the best I could do is what it brought me here. And I'm still trying to do the same thing. And I don't know it. They won't tell me. Nobody will say... <clears throat> Nobody. See, I know I'm wrong. You don't have to tell me I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong because of the way I feel inside. I feel inside. I go around talking to myself. I go around kicking myself in the hind end because I said something to you. I thought bad of you. I bad mouth you. I did something like that. I'm gossiping even. I'm telling everybody how rotten you are and why you don't you don't respond the way you should respond and do. If you do it right, we're going to be buddies. We'll be cool. See, no way, no way. See, I can't. There's so much to talk about. You know, the things like uh, like the slogans they have in AA, you know, like live and let live and, and easy does it and think and all these kind of things. You know, that stuff to me, they're not just slogans. They're really an actual principles to use in my life as I live my life. And I'll never forget it. I, back in 1959, I had to learn what it means to live and let live. And it was about somebody close to me, too. And then after that, I could realize that this year, this life that I'm talking about, them slogans, there's a, there's a basis, there's a foundation. They're principles. They really are principles that will help my life and make my life much better so that I can be somebody in this world that I've always wanted to be and I couldn't be. Because live and let live was one of the hardest things that I could never accept you because I wanted to change you. I could never accept you for whatever you're doing. Is that the best you're doing? That's the best you can do and be satisfied with that and not want you to change. <clears throat> alcoholism is never talked about in Alcoholics Anonymous from the podium very rare do you hear anybody at all talk about alcoholism they're talking about maybe about their neighbors somebody uh, their troubles uh, and I'm not picking on these people now the only thing I'm trying to say and trying to show you that the word alcoholism is more than a word. And the trouble with that is, is that what brought me here? The bars didn't bring me here, the bottles and all of that kind of stuff. Not really. What brought me here was my mind. That's what brought me here. And I don't know that, though. And I don't associate that to living without the alcohol. I think that deep down inside here, the subconscious, unconscious me, thinks always in terms that I'm not drinking. And it gives me the excuse to do what I want to do in a day I'm in. And I don't recognize that. I don't bring it to the service and look at it. I just do it. And then I say, I'm okay. I'm doing fine. Man, I got a smile on my face. Man, I have just lost my job, my house, my wife, my kids, my everything. And I'm talking about me. 
He didn't ask me how I'm doing. I'm doing good. I'm playing a game all the time. I'm trying to make my life a good world by being happy. I'm telling myself to do something, and I don't have the power to do it, and I'm telling myself to do it anyway. I don't recognize the purpose of coming to meetings. This is why we come to meetings. This is one of the reasons, major reason, is to be able to identify my life. I had a sponsor that told me from this moment on, he said, especially at meetings, pay attention. When somebody's talking, pay attention. Listen carefully to what they're saying, not to judge them, criticize them, but to see where you're at, to where your mind is going, how you think, to see. He said, you'll be surprised how quick that you can identify yourself because you see, that open mind, I had a closed mind. When I told you in the beginning, when we started this, it's only my opinion now. I'm not the authority only of my life because of AA. So try to keep an open mind. Whether it satisfies you or not is not the important part. But to be receptive to something in the day you're in that maybe God wants you to hear something. You see, I don't take people for granted. I don't take days for just, just because they're days. I don't take waitresses because they come up and wait because they work there. There's something special going on. There's a role to play. There's a way to think and act in the day I'm in. Without this consciousness of God in the program of recovery, it wouldn't be a program of recovery because it would be my program of recovery. It would be me telling me to do this, to do that. You see the steps, like I told you, are in a logical order form, 12 of them. And during this process of this year, 12 steps, it doesn't mean that I have to live according to the 12 steps before I can have peace of mind and serenity, a good life, or have God in my life. doesn't mean that at all. It starts out in Alcoholics Anonymous in step one. And it says, I admit I'm powerless over alcohol, dash, my life is unmanageable. An unmanageable life has to be, has to be talked about. I just got through talking a, a, quite a bit uh, about the disease of alcoholism as, as a disease today. Now, not a disease back when I was drunk. It hasn't got anything to do with that. It started there, sure. But it, the, the way of life, the purpose of going to meetings, the purpose of getting up today and offering my life to God, that's for today. That means now. That means right now. I'm not getting ready for tonight. I'm not getting ready when I go through the door. Maybe I'll run into somebody and they, they holler at me or something, whatever it is. I'm not getting prepared to look at the world because I have to get ready for it. If this, here, this has got to be clear to my way of thinking. As we live in Alcoholics Anonymous, as alcoholics, why keep coming to these meetings? If I, if I haven't drank, I haven't drank now coming up to 42 years. I haven't had no alcohol in me. In fact, it, 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 it was, uh, they put me in a hospital on December, uh, December 8th. They, for three days, they gave me alcohol, weaned me off of alcohol and paraldehyde. And then no more alcohol. I haven't had any alcohol since then. So to keep talking about this as alcoholism, I think... And I know, for me, that it must be explained what alcoholism is before the steps are in application. Because I went through the steps in the beginning with my sponsor. And I know steps. I got a good mind. I studied. I listened. He hammered on me. Hammered on me. He had, he had me sit across me at the table with his finger in my nose like this, just constantly telling me all about steps. Just endlessly. And then I think in terms I can go out in the world I'm in now, in performing the world I'm in, because I've got a sponsor who's got nine years, I'm going to meetings, I'm not drinking, and this is going to make it, I'll never make it. I'll stay sober, possibly, but I'll still keep the same world that I lived in that I had to drink over. I'll still keep it, because it's my mind. It's not the drinking, it was the mind, my thinking, the way life was. As soon as, <clears throat> as, soon as I found out, when I was drinking, the alcohol was treating my alcoholism, and I didn't know it. And by that I mean it made the world I was in a world I could be in because I was loaded. I was with booze. The booze gave me the confidence. It gave me the world that I looked at. I could look at it. I liked that world. I liked the fun. I like everything about it, but don't like what it did to me. You see, I don't associate this, though, when I get sober. I don't think in terms of this when I'm sober. I think in terms that it's a wasm. Alcohol is gone. Now I'm all right. I'm, all I have to do now is go to more meetings. Listen to my sponsor. Go back and do step four. I didn't do step four right. Maybe I didn't do step six right. Maybe I better go there. That's where my trouble lies. No, it don't lie there. It lies in the character that I am. Because this character has to be the character today that God says I'll be through the, according to the program of recovery, 12 steps in application. And then I can have this day where my alcoholism is being treated. 
And the reason it's being treated is because I'm living now under a power that isn't me, under a method that I don't supply. So this here is important to talk about because we're ready to go into steps. And I'll go into step one. So before I start one, is there some questions that maybe uh, we can go around and collect? The, Roy can get the questions from you. We'll keep them all. Yeah, we'll keep them all. We'll keep all of the questions, and we'll try to answer as many as the time will allow us to do. Huh? No, we'll, we'll do a little bit. Yeah, then I'll keep putting them. I'll keep piling them up. But just, just enough to. We gotta watch the time as well. See, we have a break of about ten. Yeah, you can read it. Yeah, but we have to do it by the mic. Bruce, <clears throat> Mike, here. Yeah. Huh? You what? No, no, no. It's okay. Okay. This first question says: Do you believe that there is a conflict when an alcoholic applies the twelve steps and also goes to therapy? Go ahead, do it again. Yeah, yeah that'd be better if you sat here, yeah. I'll give it to you again. Do you believe that there is a conflict when an alcoholic applies the 12 steps and also goes to therapy? You know, the, the, in Alcoholics Anonymous, you find out that there is no quarrel against anything that any one of us, see, it has got to come to the realization that there is no quarrel against medicine, psychiatry, religion, anything you want to name. Alcoholics Anonymous is here only for one reason. And the reason it's here is what I was starting to describe all the time, so the application of the steps. The character change that's going to happen in application of the steps, there will be no quarrel against anything. There will be no fight of saying you can't do this because of that and so on. There isn't. If the life that I'm going to have in Alcoholics Anonymous is under God's grace. It's going to be everything that I need in the world that I'm in, the day I'm in, is going to be supplied. Now, if, whether it's going to doctors, uh, psychiatry, or anything, I don't care what it is, there's nothing that we can stand against. There's nothing. That's our problem in the first place. We have a mind that says we quarrel with things. We find fault with things. We look at things for excuses. We look at things that you can't do this because of that, and so on. That's stopping the will of God. That's stopping the grace of God. There's no there's no right or wrong. We're not trying to do right from wrong and all that. In the program recovery, we're trying to build a character. So the character that you're building now is going to be the character for your life today, as you live today. If it's necessary, if it's needed, whatever it is, it'll be there. Because there's none of us can say, don't go there because you've got to have this and only this. I wouldn't know what that means because... This is a message that I'm trying to tell you. A message of Alcoholics Anonymous that comes from print. It's already established. It's in the book, the big book, the 12 by 12. And like I told you, the AA comes, all of it. So, no, I, I, you, you couldn't answer that by saying one way or another. It has nothing to do. This is only about Alcoholics Anonymous in application today of the 12 steps. The reason I said about alcoholism so strongly is so that when we get into steps, there's a reason why the steps say what they do in the order form they're in. So this will be explained as we go through. See? We'll keep these questions, by the way. The ones we can't answer, maybe we'll answer later. We'll give maybe a little more time or something like that. Next one says, how can I rediscover the spiritual state of surrender in the day that I'm in? What tools can I apply to learn and practice humility every day? The, the purpose of this workshop right now is for both of them questions there. <clears throat> and the, the best that I can say, you know, without going into the, into the steps, the building of the character in Alcoholics Anonymous is a way of life in the day you're in. It's not a progression thing of 1 to 12 and then you get it. It's a living thing today that you do today so that the principles that are being used today coming from the steps will guarantee each one of us that your disease will be treated, your mind, in other words. 
So this will be that I don't walk on water. You don't walk on water either. You will make mistakes. I'll make mistakes. But you see, there's a way of life here. There's principles that will allow us to correct whatever it is in the moment we're in so we don't have to destroy the world, so we don't have to go and hurt people, so we don't continually do the same thing over again, and this here is the same thing we used to do. We try to change. We can't change. Yes, you can change. The change comes in today, this day, now. Even yesterday, as good it was or as bad as it was, has no reference to what I'm talking about now. Does not. There is nothing that you can bring from yesterday to bank on, to draw from, to use in today. If you don't do it today, you don't have it today. If you're still acting up like yesterday and you're acting up today, that's because of today. That's not because of yesterday. The application, the change of character, must be a living process. You live it as you live it, you do it. That's application. That's the performance. That's where God is. That's where the strength is. That's where the direction is. If you cannot store this up. The disease won't let you store it up. The next one says, how do you pray? How do you build a relationship with God? How do you keep an open mind? How do you know if you're in God's will or self-will? How can I identify alcoholism? In, how can you identify alcoholism in yourself if self doesn't want you to see it? Again, well, it's, it's, this is always saying just approximately the same thing, going the same direction and everything. The, in the step application, there's a change of character. It must be that way. And that's why it's never a wasm. You can never have part of you and part of God. It just don't work that way. Because the old character is a power, and God is a power. But when God is there, you can't be there. But when God is, God is more powerful, this is step application. Now, we're going step two for this. And this is, has to be learned, that the process or the method is already there in print to supply what you need in the day you're in for any reason. I don't care what the reason is, because that's the change of character. That's the new man, page 63, when it says, I've been reborn. Reborn is why the third step prayer is there. When you offer yourself to God to do with me as thou wilt, take away all my difficulties. This here is the prayer so that you and I, as the day we live in, be relieved of the bondage of self. Alcoholism. Alcoholism. So should you try to do things different even though you might not be at the step to have the power to do it? If someone does you wrong or you think someone has done you wrong, should you tell them about it or go to someone to talk about it or keep it to yourself or go to God with it? And how do you go to God with it? What do you do when the obsession comes and you pray and it keeps coming back? If you don't totally understand about the ego factor in an alcoholic, should you try? Should you try and how can you? You know, there's there's a lot of questions here. <laughs> we, we got a, that's the whole program. <laughs> oh man, you know they're all legitimate. Every one of them are because they're ones that I've had too. The same way doesn't make any difference. You know, you see, you know, uh, in 1957. Uh, the book uh, Alcoholics Anonymous Comes of Age was printed and put out, and I got the first edition over in the valley. And I was having great troubles, you know, and troubles I was having with me. And uh, so in this year, Alcoholics Anonymous Comes of Age, in the back there where it says medicine looks at Alcoholics Anonymous, Dr. Tebow's in there. And Dr. Tebow talks about ego and about how ego is, see, and uh, the description of it, see, and about how ego has marvelous recuperative powers, you know, like when they took me out of the Alki Hospital, you know, I have a dime. I lost my job. I was a big wheel, I thought, and all that kind of stuff, you know. And so I did, my ego was smashed, you know. And it was smashed. And I would listen to anybody. I'd look at anybody. And I would listen and try and try and all that. But the second my money started to get in my wallet again, you know, I got my job back and something like that, here comes my ego again. Man, I'm the, his majesty, the baby's home now. So this here is part of the, the, the what I was talking about in the beginning about the description of alcoholism, 
alcoholism and this here ego factor and self, who self is. All one, three things, one person. So this to me was important for me to have the knowledge of the ego factor, how ego has that marvelous recuperative powers, how ego, it says, it says, it would be, let's see, it says the, the, the capacity of ego to bypass experience would be humorous if it wasn't so tragic in its consequence. But that's true, see, it is, because ego is something that I never knew that it was part of my life. It was the way I think. It was like a value system. It was something that I used. The more, the more I got something, the better I was. The bigger I got, the more, uh, the more important self-importance come on. Uh, I started to be somebody looking down on people, talking, uh, talking against you because I'm not doing that. I'm a pretty good guy. I know what I, I know what it's all about and everything. So ego has to be considered. But see, because ego, in the steps now, ego is going to be hit right away in step two. But it's got to, we got to go in application to get that. So we'll talk about that. I want to learn to have a relationship with women without going into lust. How can I do this? <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you that? <laughs> hey, you know, you know that you know it really isn't. It, it's it's funny, ha ha, but it's not funny, peculiar. You know, because it is something that's happening all the time, and it should be addressed and it should be looked at. And the reason why is because I believe you know that the the conception or the mind of self. Uh, is explained real well on page 64 and 65 in your in your 12 by 12, and it'll be just about what we're talking about here. And so when we get to the step there, uh, we'll uh, we'll look at that too. And that, that's uh, that's it, I'm not skipping this now. It will, it'll come up. You know. When I pray, my mind wanders, even though I try to stay focused. How how do I learn to to pray so I can be more spiritual spiritually connected to my higher power you you know i along this what you're saying there now i had i got mixed up a little bit too in this see i come to alcoholics anonymous i never gave a desperation prayer i never, i knew no god i didn't know how to talk to god i didn't know how to pray i didn't know what you say i didn't know what you do i never been to church bible studies or anything so when i got to alcoholics anonymous I, you know it was all very very strange it was things that i didn't want to do but there came a time that I had to do something, and I started doing it. And I had the same problem, too, about prayer. I would start to learn. I, I learned to pray by another man's God. I learned to pray on my knees by my bed. I learned to pray in, in the nighttime and then in the morning. And so I would I would be on my knees talking to God. And the way I talked to him, then I used the other man where he called him God, I called him God. And I started to associate my life like he told me to. And so this here became... <clears throat> a ritual, something I never know how to do. And and I felt real bad because as I started to pray, first thing you know, I'd start talking, uh, I'd start thinking about other things, and generally it was fun and women and different things. And it would upset me, and I didn't know why it upset me. Uh, it made me feel guilty. It made me feel like I shouldn't do that. And I kept trying. And as I kept trying, though, it became less and less of my mind wandering away and thinking away. Then I started centering on certain things that were very important to me then because I was talking to God, another man's God, that I needed help with my anger and hostility. And that was about the only, that was about the amount of prayer that I gave because I didn't know how to thank him. I didn't know how to praise him. I didn't know how to acknowledge him in, in, as, as my life is. I didn't know how to do it. So I did it that way. But as I started, I started using it a little bit more at work in consciousness of actually asking God about my anger and hostility at work without praying, just talking to him out of my mind mentally. And so I started to build something there that I didn't know that I, that I should do it, and I was doing it. It was step two, and I didn't know it. And so th this here meant that as I started doing things differently, I was doing something away from me that I wasn't talking to me, I wasn't including me, I didn't look to me as a power or anything else like that, and I started having results. It was self-evident. You know, I, my mind was slowing down. Uh, I wasn't so critical. 
But it was only when I was in tune or attached, attached to the relationship for help. That's, that's all. But the moment I left there, I was back to self, full bore. See? You said successful recovery requires a character change. It also tells us in the big tells us this in the big book. Why do we never hear this or talk about this at meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous? Well, you know, it's the same thing I said in the beginning about about my life and about the purpose of Alcoholics Anonymous here. There is a message here. And the message that's here is the message that I'm talking about because it's in print. And in print means it's already established because the application of the steps will produce this. Now, I don't know. I know what you're saying as far as the way of life and what's going on. I know that. Uh, to, have, to have the world different than you ever had before, there must be something there to do that. And it's, it's very self-evident to me when I was living in the world sober about my behavior, about my success, about how angry I was, how I was looking for trouble, how I would find fault, how I never had any peace of mind, how I used to drive my car at nighttime. I'd drive my car till maybe 5 o'clock in the morning, and they didn't have the freeways then out there, and I'd have to go up old Sepulveda Hill even. And the reason why is because my mind was so hurt and so scattered that I had to drive the car. I couldn't lay still in the bed anymore. I couldn't hang around the house. My wife's sleeping, and I'm waking her up all the time because of my pacing and my I toss and turning and everything else like that. The way of life here is going to be in step application to change. Change. The change comes in the day that you live in as you do it. It's in print. It's not what I say. I Listen, I don't have... I carry a message. I'm a messenger. I don't have no message. There's nothing I can tell you or give you or, or add to your life, anything at all, nothing. But you see, each one of us has to be the same as we live the life. We have to change. Because what brought you here, you can't keep going that way until you face this thing for what it really is. That as you stay sober, as your days turn into weeks, months, and years, as you look at people, and you still have that same character, it becomes very, very self-honest, at least it did to me. There's nothing wrong with these people. There's nothing wrong with this day. But there's a lot wrong with me. So why not do something now? Because each and every one of us came here for the same reason. This is what it means on page 17 in your big book at the bottom there. And that's the solution. It says that we have found a solution a way out, which we absolutely can agree upon with brotherly and harmonious action. This is the great news this book carries to those that suffer from alcoholism. So page 98, when it says in there, burn the idea into the consciousness of every man that he can get well regardless of anyone, provided he trusts in God and clean house. See, clean house is the change of character. Trusting in God is the power that makes it possible to clean house. Clean house isn't your apartment or your home. It's your mind, and it's not your conscious mind. It isn't. See? And so this here, to me, it has to be talked about. If it's not talked about, you know what's talked about? It talked about troubles. talked about the IRS, how rotten your neighbor is, how bad your boss is, how bad the freeway is, how bad of all the stuff that you lost and you wish you had it back. What would you talk about in Alcoholics Anonymous if you don't talk about the step application a day you're in instead of what has gone by? What would you talk about? You've got to talk about nothing but the but the, the life that was a, a rotten life, a dirty life, a life where you hurt people and you're sober, a life that you wish you was never born, at least me, I wish I was never born sometimes because of the damage I did to somebody. This here, to sit here now, today, and refuse to at least have an open mind, to see maybe possibly, you might act like that, you might do that, you might find yourself someday talking to somebody, looking at somebody with some vicious mind, a vicious eyes, and wonder, you, have you got the right to do that? Does that make you feel good to look at that or does it make you feel bad? Just exactly what's going on inside of your mind. These are questions I had to ask me, and I'm not asking you, because each one of us are here for the same reason. We have to find a world that we can live in, because the world we have lived in keeps turning. You lose jobs. You get divorced. You lose girlfriends, boyfriends. You lose your money. You lose your own sanity over what? 
to prove a point, to show somebody how wrong they are. It isn't worth it. Not in my book it isn't, because I don't know the purpose of coming here. I thought I came here first, strictly what I said before, to stay sober. No way, man. I didn't come for that reason. I came, that's part of a requirement. I know that. I'm not speaking against it. But this, what we're doing now, is important. These two cover resentments, Bob. Uh, what do you do about resentments today? How do you keep an open mind? What should be done daily in awareness and application? The other ones talk about uh, now resent how how resentments affect you be before affected you before you got sober. The main thing about resentments are is to identify what a resentment is. Uh, where it came from or anything else like that, I don't think is really important. I just know that the resentment is an anger inside that's, that's in me. It's actually, it could, it could be about people or it could be about conditions, places, things, money or anything else like that. It's about the mind, the way my mind functions. So that these resentments are in a memory form. And I'm like an elephant. I got a file cabinet in my brain. I keep going in that file cabinet all the time, man. I get all of my answers and all of my direction right in that file cabinet. And that's where these resentments stay until the time comes that they're brought to the surface. And once they're brought to the surface, they're easy to look at, at least look at, become aware of. And then something can be done about them because this is step application again. This is the change of character that comes in steps. That's why they have step four, five, and six. And this means exactly that each and every one of us have to have the method. Otherwise, when we say... I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that, I won't be resentful, I'll forget, I'll forgive him, or something like that. No way, man. It's going to come again. Just get ready for it. My past is my future if I don't change. What I did yesterday, I'll do today if I don't change. This is true for every one of us because that's the disease of the mind. That's the purpose of coming to meetings like this right now. And it's also the purpose of why the 12 steps are in the order form they're in, so that too can be gone. We why, better, do, why do I remember everything bad that happens to me? And I accept and, ad, and adapt to it, but I can't accept and live or adapt what I'm, le what I'm learning in AA, even though I want, want to do so bad. Well, you, this, is, uh, this is the same principle again, is that I by myself am nothing. The Father doeth the work. That's in step. Now, what that means is, is that when I try to figure life out in the day I'm in, the power of self is still the power of my life. I'm always trying to do things on my terms. I'm always pushing and shoving. Even though I'm sober and know this, I pray to God, but then I take it back again. I pray to God that I want Him to help me, but I won't let Him help me because I do my thing. I'm the one that has to be pleased. I'm the one that says, no, I'm not going to do that. That's too much work. I don't want to do that. They used to talk against me, these guys, they'd say, they say he's a Jesus freak. I'm no Jesus freak. I found a power here. It's called God. And I found a power here that saved my life. It turned the world around for me. But you see, it didn't do it just because it's there. It didn't do it at meetings like this here. It don't happen that way. I'll tell you this. You can go to meetings the rest of your life and still stay, stay the same character you've always been if you don't change. Because that's the purpose of Alcoholics Anonymous is to find out just exactly what this is all about. Why can't I have what you have? I can but I must do as you do. See, and that's the reason why the step application, that's the reason for sponsors. I believe a sponsor is not just somebody that tells you to go to meetings, talks to you on the phone for half an hour, an hour, or something like that, and then turn you loose again. I don't think so. I don't think that's sponsorship. Sponsorship is actually doing exactly what we're doing right now, trying to carry the message, trying to help someone be, at least be aware that there is something to do there is a way of going for each and every one of us. And if you need help, we'll, we'll, we'll show it to you, we'll give it to you, present it to you. But you still have to do it. There's nothing I can do for you. This here, this is not a self-help program. It's a God-help program. This here means exactly what it says. That as I live, my character has to be that character with God. That's when my disease is being treated. It's not being treated in time, meetings, or anything else that you want to put there. Because the change has to be in the now, or otherwise I do my thing again. You better quit. Yeah, you better get, No, you can save the rest of them. Put them, put them separate. Keep them away from their mothers. I mean, 
we'll start in, we'll start in step one. And step one, it says, I admitted, you know, let me, I told you before about that. I know what it reads. So if I say I and, and me and stuff like that, I know how it reads. So don't, don't take it wrong. You know, is that it says, I admitted I'm powerless over alcohol dash. My life's unmanageable. And, and the purpose, now each of these, each of these 12 steps have principles. Each of them, each of them represent principles. Principles are truth, truth. Now a truth has to be there. In other words, a principle has to be there. Otherwise, it is not something that's there in you. See, uh, it's, this is not a thought process. This is a character change. It means that when it says, I admit I'm powerless over alcohol, the principle is that I'll never be able to drink alcohol again as long as I live. That's a principle. That's the truth. Truth is that I'll never be able to drink alcohol ever again. Never. Now, that's a principle. Try to remember that because it's going to change. Then it describes in there just exactly what it is. And it talks about alcoholism. And this alcohol now is the wet side. And it means exactly that. It means that I got something wrong with me. I got something, you know, in, on page 23 in your big book, and it talks in there, it says in, in 23, it said it would be academic to talk about all of these troubles, tragedies, all this here stuff that bar, bottles happen, make us do, make us have, have in our life. It says it would be academic to talk about that if we never took the drink in the first place. Because the disease centers in the mind, not the body. And then in step one, they're talking in step one right away. And it says, where I admit I'm powerless over alcohol, that my life is unmanageable. Dash, unmanageable. Well, see what they're saying there, that it's a disease of twofold nature. It's a mental obsession with a physical allergy. And it says there's never been any success for any alcoholic by the unaided will. And it's talking there that this here condition we have, the mental obsession will kill you because it'll make you drink. Also, the allergy will kill you because if you do drink, that'll kill you too. Either one. You've got to see this for what it is, that you'll never be able to take another drink as long as you live. It's got to be established in your own mind as the individual that what I'm saying now, if you haven't looked at it, you better look at it. Because you don't want to get going down the line somewhere and think in terms that maybe a drink might help things. Maybe I could get away with it. Maybe it's possible. I'm not quite like these other people. You see in the step application in principle. Now, a principle is a truth. To have a truth, you have to live it. You can't have it by thinking it. You can't have, have it by talking about it. You have to apply it. You have to apply a principle to have a principle. If you're backed up by a principle, that's the character you represent. That's Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.